carpets, and a mariachi band. These were actually what SpaceX had in its early days. And of course, for NASA, it means nothing. We hadn't proven anything, I hadn't proven anything. Yes, in the context of the aerospace industry at that time dominated by government agencies, the emergence of a young private company with a dream of changing the world was the reason why it was poo-pooed by everyone including NASA. But everything has changed by now. Its achievement can be able to eclipse any titans such as Boeing or NASA's SLS. Politicians and other private companies fear SpaceX's rocket monopoly, while NASA has become SpaceX's loyal customer for many years. And those shocked NASA administrator Bill Nelson, I think the private space industry is extremely beneficial. Just look at what SpaceX has already accomplished. So how did SpaceX transform itself from the stepchild of the aerospace industry into a game master today? The world is made up of unbelievable truths, and Elon Musk dares to do those unbelievable things to create a new world. The image of rockets such as Starship, Falcon, and Dragon spacecraft flying in the sky is something too familiar nowadays, and those vehicles have been so successful it is bordering on a monopoly. However, just several years ago, this was something critics considered unrealistic. When there was the beginning of the space cargo and crew programs, the two serious bidders were SpaceX and Boeing, and everybody poo-pooed SpaceX and said, Oh, Boeing is a legacy company, Bill Nelson said. Well, guess who is about to make its sixth flight after its first test flight with astronauts, and guess who's still on the ground? Everything began in 2014 when NASA awarded two huge contracts, worth a total of six, eight billion dollars, to Boeing and SpaceX to get crew to the ISS independently once again. For a better overview, let's get into a time machine and go back to the wild early days of SpaceX. If you have been a fan of SpaceX long enough, you probably still remember the story of Gwyn Shotwell and the story of her selling invisible rockets. When first joined SpaceX, Shotwell was immediately assigned an unbelievable task by Elon Musk, selling some rockets that did not exist and had not flown before, of course. To do it, she began meeting with the United States government agencies and satellite companies to begin to persuade them to book launches on their still unflown Falcon 1 rocket. Somehow, the young unicorn SpaceX by then had its very first contracts with some private companies and more notably, NASA. All this happened before the rocket reached orbit. The long-term close cooperation between SpaceX and NASA marked with a $278 million contract in 2006 requiring Elon Musk's company to develop Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon space capsule that would ferry supplies to the ISS. But that's also when the storm comes. By 2006, Musk who had made millions when PayPal sold to eBay, had invested a third of his fortune into the space venture. In the same year, SpaceX attempted to launch its first rocket but ended up with failure as a result of a fuel leak and resultant fire. A later review of the launch vehicle found that a fuel line nut had corroded due to nearby ocean spray. SpaceX altered its design to replace aluminum hardware with stainless steel as a result. The next two launches executed the first stage of flight, but encountered issues after separation that prevented the spacecraft from reaching orbit. Three consecutive failures almost pushed the company into bankruptcy. More terribly, under the effect of Murphy's Law, Musk was also facing issues with financing at Tesla and reportedly waking from nightmares, screaming and in physical pain due to the stress. So many of Musk's friends advised him not to do SpaceX. Luke Nozek, who helped build PayPal, one of Musk's former ventures, told However, what does not kill you will make you stronger. Finally, God gave him a last chance as SpaceX's fourth flight as funding was beginning to run dry. On September 28, 2008, the Falcon 1's first successful launch was from Omlik Island in the Marshall Islands. It was also the first successful orbital launch from a privately funded company, representing a major shift in an industry that had been dominated by government programs. That historic mark paved the way for more lucrative contracts between a young private company, SpaceX, and a massive national agency, NASA. In 2012, SpaceX launched its first cargo delivery to the ISS, and by 2014, it was co-awarded the aforementioned NASA contract. NASA's commercial crew program manager, Kathy Luders, told reporters, Boeing and SpaceX proposed the value within which they were able to do the work, and the government accepted that. However, even if you can demonstrate your value, criticism will not leave you. In an article for Forbes in 2011, 
Aerospace and defense writer Lauren Thompson voiced concerns about NASA becoming overly dependent on the still young SpaceX and also wrote that Musk's enthusiasm is infectious and inspiring, but SpaceX's performance to date doesn't measure up to the rhetoric. There was also doubt within NASA. Former NASA astronaut turned SpaceX engineer Garrett Reisman told that there was a perception of SpaceX along the lines of their cowboys. They're dangerous. They're going to kill somebody. Despite being the focus of criticism, SpaceX has chosen to do its best in silence and let time tell. In 2020, under crew Dragon Demo 2, SpaceX made a big bang as a rocket ship named Dragon breathed new fire into America's human spaceflight program, carrying two astronauts on a much anticipated adventure. The launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon crew capsule from Florida's Kennedy Space Center to the ISS marked the first time since 2011 that humans had blasted off into orbit from United States soil. To date, SpaceX's Crew Dragon has completed six missions and is awaiting the return of Crew 7. The Dragon's reliability is so impressive that NASA decided to extend its number of missions from 6 to 14. Starliner, meanwhile, nearly a decade on, has yet to realize its dream of becoming a premier spacecraft supplier. Not a single person has flown Boeing's spacecraft to space. No one has booked a private flight. Continuous technical problems kept the vehicle on Earth for a long time, causing many questions about exactly what was behind these strange series of events. As a result, the company absorbs $1.4 billion in cost overruns. So, what went wrong? To answer, NASA's safety advisors have called for an independent review of the program. In April 2021, SpaceX continued to receive NASA's trust to develop one of the most crucial aspects of the Artemis III mission to return American astronauts to the moon for the first time in over half a century. It is the human landing system, the Starship lunar lander that will lower humans to the lunar surface, while NASA's Orion capsule remains in orbit around the moon. In preparation for Artemis III, SpaceX has pushed the Starship's development as fast as possible. Fast forward to 2023, just one month after Flight 2, the company quickly performed the static fire test with the next Starship's both stages, including Ship 28, aimed to demonstrate engine startup during a flight in space. This test plays an important role in demonstrating HLSE's capability in Artemis 3 and gearing up for Flight 3, where SpaceX will perform Artemis's key point in orbit refueling. The company aims to conduct Flight Number 3 early this year. Previously, Starship HLSS's full-sized mock-up elevator was also checked, not mentioned to the component tests regarding to Raptor vacuum engine or nose cone mock-up several months ago. With such a snowballing speed, we can absolutely raise hope that Artemis 3's timeline will take place in 2025 as planned. By contrast, NASA's SLS, or the backbone of the Artemis program that was just launched in Artemis 1 in 2022, cannot keep up with the public's expectations. Its development alone costs Congress 12 years and $23 billion, and that's not taking into account the Orion capsule. Not enough, although expensive at $4.1 billion per launch, its thrust is only half that of Starship. The existence of SLS has been controversial for many years, thus the emergence of commercial companies is much needed. Bill Nelson also confirmed that, so I want Blue Origin, I want SpaceX. I want all of the other companies to be successful because I want as many opportunities for us to explore the cosmos as possible. NASA made history in 1969 when Apollo 11 sent humans to the moon. And now, the Space Launch System is the backbone of NASA's new human spaceflight program, Artemis, which is currently aiming to put humans back on the moon by 2026. SpaceX has equally lofty goals. The company is testing the Starship, a fully reusable rocket capable of sending humans to the moon, Mars, and beyond. But first, SpaceX plans to use the Starship to send Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa and a crew of specially chosen passengers around the moon. This mission was originally announced in 2018 with a 2023 launch date. However, Starship has not yet been allowed to conduct the next orbital flight test by the FAA. The first attempt ended in flames. Despite their different goals, the SLS and Starship serve surprisingly similar purposes, even more surprising when you consider how NASA plans to use the Starship to land the astronauts on the moon. As these two rockets shoot for the moon, 
Here's how they compare. Firstly, to be fair, we need to talk about the important specifications including their size and power. Cell S is slightly complicated in that it is expected to come in various combinations. Its first variation, Block 1, will stand at 322 feet tall and weigh 5.75 million pounds. When it launches, Block 1 will produce 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, which is 15% more than Saturn V produced. It will be able to send more than 27 metric tons or 59,500 pounds into orbits beyond the Moon. In its Block 2 configuration, SLS will produce 9.5 million pounds of thrust and will be able to lift more than 46 metric tons or 101,400 pounds to deep space. Starship is set to be taller than SLS standing at 400 feet with its cargo and booster stage combined, according to SpaceX. Its super heavy booster stage will be able to provide 17 million pounds of thrust. Orbital capacity figures publicly available on the NASA and SpaceX websites aren't directly comparable. For example, NASA says SLS will be able to launch 46 metric tons to deep space, while SpaceX says Starship will be able to launch more than 100 metric tons into low Earth orbit. This is complicated by the fact that SLS is intended to go straight to its destination, while there are plans for Starship to reach Earth orbit refuel via another starship, and then continue its journey, which would boost its range and payload capability. However, an important aspect, the SLS is not a reusable system. The Starship, on the other hand, aims to be SpaceX's first fully reusable rocket. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy had an expendable second stage. The capabilities of Starship and SLS may be comparable, but the pace of their progress is starkly different. CLS funding started in 2011, three years before SpaceX broke ground for its spaceport at Boca Chica Beach. The WSLS flight occurred last November, a 25-day-long mission that sent an uncrewed Orion capsule to lunar orbit and back. With the first Starship launch, SpaceX's effort has nearly caught up with NASA's heavy-lifting counterpart. Next, and most importantly, how much does it cost to launch? Well, the SLS won't come cheap. NASA has spent $11.8 billion since it began developing SLS in 2011. After many delays, the huge rocket debuted on November 16, 2022, when it launched NASA's successful uncrewed Artemis 1 mission to the Moon. An additional $11.2 billion was allocated in the White House's 2024 federal budget request for future work on SLS from 2024 through 2028. NASA plans to use these funds to develop core stages, rocket engines and other components for SLS, ultimately to increase the vehicle's efficiency as well as the amount of cargo that can be delivered to the moon for Artemis. However, the baseline costs and schedules for this future work have not been established despite GAO's nearly decade-long concerns, according to the report, which was put together after interviewing NASA officials and reviewing the agency's current activities, Cellel's documentation and future plans. NASA does not plan to measure production costs to monitor the affordability of the SLS program, the report states. In late 2021, a report by NASA's Office of Inspector General showed that NASA will likely spend a total of $93 billion on the Artemis program between 2012 and 2025, and that each SLS launch will cost about $4.1 billion. A large chunk of the budget was attributed to hiring contractors in every U.S. state and more than 20 similar partners across Europe. As Musk declared, even NASA recently admitted that SLS is unaffordable. On the other hand, Starship promises to be billions of dollars cheaper than SLS. The Super Heavy Booster is designed to be used repeatedly, while SLS rockets are good for just one launch. In 2019, the White House Office of Management and Budget estimated the cost of an SLS launch at more than $2 billion, while each Starship launch will cost about $40 million. The company will have spent $5 billion or more on its Starship vehicle and launch infrastructure by the end of this year, according to court filings and comments by the company's chief executive. Finally, the design ethos guiding SLS and Starship couldn't be more different. NASA builds space vehicles to assume perfection and then tests them to prove it. 
SpaceX builds many prototypes, testing them to their limits and often beyond. Tanks burst, rocket-powered craft explode on failed landings, and things catch on fire. The hardware in today's flight was Booster 7 and Starship 24 serial numbers that identify the vehicles as born-to-die testbeds. It's a completely different philosophy, trying to get it right the first time perfectly versus doing something quickly to learn as fast as possible and converging on the right thing, says former NASA astronaut Garrett Reisman, now a professor of astronautical engineering at the University of Southern California and a SpaceX senior advisor. SpaceX is designing vehicles that you can rapidly prototype, he says. If serial number 10 blows up, you have serial number 11 waiting in the wings. Just keep moving and keep learning. This is fine while building spacecraft, but that mentality must shift when it comes to flying with humans aboard. Can you have a culture that rewards rapid decision-making, tons of risk, and it is fine with failure but then ramp up the vigilance when the consequence of failure is high? Reisman asks. The trap that SpaceX has to guard against is, can you dial it up and dial it down appropriately? After all, when SpaceX finally tests, flies, and produces a reliable version of Starship in the next few years, it will disrupt the global launch industry. Previously, the limiting factor for what one might do in space was cost. At a price of $4.1 billion per mission, the SLS and Orion embody this concept. When Starship delivers, it will change the fundamental question behind our exploration program from what can we afford to do in space to what should we do in space. And that just wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.